uh, I think it was 761, right? And yes, it was correct. And we see this wonderful, cute little animation. <laughs> I might actually get rid of this in the actual experiment if I uh, run it. Just make this some incorrect number. And it's a sad emoji, right? As you can see, this is, you know, much better than just that boring old thing. Hello everyone, my name is Fazi Maduddin and I am a cooperative teacher at the University of Karachi. So before we begin, let me explain why I'm making this video in the first place. So I've been teaching at the University of Karachi for a number of years and before that I used to be a student there as well. And I think one of the core strengths of our program is that we focus a lot on practical research. However, I feel that we don't really use technology that much and our use of technology could really, really improve. Sure, we use SPSS and Google Forms, but that's basically it. So as a teacher, I wanted to give my students a flavor of how we can use computers to make our experiments more reliable and replicable. And that is why I used a an open source software called PsychoPy to design and conduct an experiment with them. And we learned a lot during that experience. So I wanted to share that experience with you guys. Let me make this absolutely clear. This is not an explanation of how PsychoPy works. For that, at the end of this video, I will share with you guys how I learned PsychoPy. And I think it's a great resource we really don't need to reinvent the wheel here. So in this video, I'll simply give you a brief overview of what our experiment was about. And then I will talk about some of the mistakes we made during our exper uh, experiment and how I attempted to fix those mistakes and made a new and improved version of the same experiment. So let's begin. All right, so this is PsychoPy. This is the builder window. We have two other windows in PsychoPy and we have lots and lots of customization options, but we're gonna be using very few of this. So just a brief overview. Uh, our experiment was a simple memory test that was uh, designed to test the duration of a uh, short-term memory store. So we would show the participants three digits which would make up one number. And then uh, after a certain while, we would ask them to recall those digits. And of course the duration in between was our independent variable. But of course we couldn't let the participants rehearse during that uh, duration. So we have what's called an interference task. An interference task is designed to keep the participant engaged so that uh, the participant cannot rehearse the information and then and hence transfer it to the long-term store because we wanted to uh, test the duration of the memory store. So there, there were three uh, different uh, kind of trials. Uh, in one try, uh, in some trials, the duration was five seconds and in some it was 10 seconds and then in some it was 18 seconds. And of course we hypothesized that in the 18 second uh, long interference task, the uh, number of correct responses would decrease dramatically, right? So at the bottom, we can see the basic layout of our experiment. Uh, this is basically the timeline and each box is uh, essentially a routine, so which might show up or not show up on our screen, but most of the routines here are ones that do show up. The first one, welcome, where we have the consent form, then instructions, then we have a loop. Okay, so loops are very uh, essential in PsychoPy. This is basically designed so that we could run a certain set of routines over and over again. And of course, when you're doing trials, then you want to utilize that. So in our practice loop, we have uh, the first screen which shows the numbers, 
then there is the inference task and then the participants is asked to respond and then once the participant has responded then they are given the feedback right so for each loop we have to provide a list of conditions list of variables which the psychopi is going to run through and this list uh, could even either be provided through uh, code right or it could be provided through a simple excel file which we have over here so let me just switch to the window to the excel file and the first three variables and the columns are the digits and one and two and three and then we have a column for intf which is a variable that defines the duration of the interference task and then we have a column for the correct answer so the way this works is that psychopi is going to take one of these rows and it's going to repeat uh, take those values for one run so in, uh, the first time it goes for example it's going to take 278 as the digits and it's going to uh, take 18 seconds as the length of the duration task and of course the answer is 278 and then it's going to go through the rest of these rows in a random order right okay so after that once the practice is done then we move on to the actual trials which is essentially a repeat of the same thing so let me just uh, start the experiment to show you uh, this all this in action all right uh, again if you are lost in all of this don't worry i'm gonna at the end of this window i'm gonna sh uh, show you how you can learn all of this learn to do all of this yourself as well right so these are the fields uh, you can actually change this as well if you want you can add more fields or less fields you press OK. So, so it's in windowed form because uh, it's in pilot mode. So if I run it for real, it's going to do the same thing in full screen. So this is the welcome screen where there is the consent form. And then next, we have the instructions page. You can pause and uh, view this. And we start with the practice. So it started with 278. Now the participant is supposed to count down. Uh, increase from 700. I'm going to skip this. We can't do that in the actual experiment, of course. 278. And it tells us that our response was correct. All right. 337. Let me just make a mistake. And it shows you that the response was incorrect. And then again. Right. So the three times that was the practice. And now we move on to the actual trials and this would be a boring repetitive thing so i'm probably going to be editing this out from the actual window uh, video i think this is it yes okay so the experiment has concluded thank you for your participation you press any key and it ends and it shows you code zero, which means that there were no errors involved. OK, so once we're done with our experiment, we get this folder and it has uh, one file, actually three files for each participant. We are only interested in the CSV file. Once you open this, we see a bunch of stuff, right? So it's tracking basically everything it's tracking first all the variables, right? Uh, and then T1, T2, that's the actual uh, well, uh, files. And then in this, we have the same, right? We have 278 key response, which is, and what's the correct one? And what's important is over here, let me show you, wait, this T resp, this is the variable that's important. Uh, this is the one that gives you zero and one for each trial. So that is for uh, incorrect response, we have zero. And for the correct response, we have one, right? So we can see for each participant, we can see uh, how many uh, correct or incorrect um, responses they gave. And 
for each show, we also have, you know, what the number was, what the duration was, all of that stuff, right? So all of that, then uh, what you do is you take all these CSV files and you combine them. And that's what I've done uh, in this file. You have this combined data using um, the Excel's combined feature. So we have, you can see this is just the data of all those participants. That was 48 participants in our experiment. All those combined into one single file. And once I've done that, then I, uh, I made this pivot table that summarized the data, right? So in the data we have, uh, we, we found that we, uh, we could actually separate the five second trial in eight, 10 second and 18 seconds, that's what we did. And when we did that, we found that in the five second trial, right, there were 128 times it was uh, the participants got it right and 112 times they got it wrong. So that was a bit more than 50%, right? And in the 10 second trial, they got it uh, right 100 times, which is a bit less than uh, 50%. Uh, but then in the 18 second trial, we got one of four times the participant got it right. And now this is surprising because first off, we don't see that much of a drop and actually we get uh, a higher percentage of correct answers in uh, the 18 second trials. Right, which was not what we predicted. And this brings us to uh, the first and the major problem in our experiment. So during uh, the experimentations, I realized that one of the numbers was 911. And that was a problem because every time 911 would show up, it showed up once for each participant because these numbers were all uh, written by type by me, so they're not going to be changing. So every time 911 showed up, the participants were like, oh, we, we're going to remember this because it has, everyone knows that 911 has a meaning. So now it is something that it was easy to recall, right? So I made another pivot table for just 911, right? And I realized that every time 911 showed up, it was paired with an 18 second interference task, which was also not good, right? But despite the fact that the interference task was 18 seconds long, for 911, the correct response was uh, 41, uh, 41 of the participants actually gave the correct response, and only seven got it wrong. Uh, this basically confirmed that this specific digit, 911, had actually biased our results. So I made a third uh, pivot table, and here I excluded all, just not just 911, but also uh, any other digit that had repetitive values. So some of the digits, uh, the, some of the numbers had all three different digits, but some of them had actually repeated digits. So it was, for example, if you saw uh, 733. So 733 was easier to recall than, for example, 897 because it's, it's two pieces of information. So I got rid of all the uh, repetitive uh, digits, uh, numbers with repetitive digits, and I got rid of 911. And then what the percentages we got were these, and we had 55 and 41 uh, for five seconds and for 10 seconds, we had a bit of a um, better uh, success rate of 55 um, correct answers. And for 18 second trials, the success rate fell down to just 14, right? And I just uh, made this document for the students just to show you. Uh, the percentages, we have the same, uh, you know, number of trials and this translated into percentages to show that, you know, in, um, right, in the five second trial, the uh, percentage was 42% correct. And in 10 second trial, it was only 34% correct. And then 18 second trial, it actually dropped down to 14.6% uh, 
uh, percent, which actually uh, corresponded with our hypothesis. Uh, so we didn't really run any statistical tests on this because this was just for first year uh, students, uh, just for demonstrating purposes. Uh, but then uh, once this all of this was done, I decided to make another version of the experiment that would actually correct this and some other mistakes. So let me just uh, briefly show you guys what I came up with. This is the new and improved version of our experiment. The main thing that I did was I got rid of the conditions file. That was the Excel file. And uh, that was because the way Excel, or the way PsychoPy would read uh, the Excel file would be row by row. And so each digit would have a specified interference task duration. So for example, 911, every time 911 uh, was shown on screen, it ran for 18 seconds, the interference task. And that was why our data was corrupted. And if that wasn't ca the case, if 911 has been present in five second and 10 second and 18 second equally, then I wouldn't have to uh, get rid of my data, data because the percentage would have remained the same, right? Um, so what I've done instead is I've used this loader screen, which does not show up in, uh, for the participants. And this is where we make a list using code and then populate that list. So we have a list of uh, the numbers and then we have the list of uh, the duration of interference tasks. And of course, because we are using code, we can simply change the number of trials like this just by changing. Uh, the digit over here and it's going to change the entire experiment and then of course I can uh, change the duration of interference uh, task available as well. Let me just uh, run this task to show you uh, the experiment in action uh, because I've made a lot of uh, a few uh, aesthetic changes as well. Right so pressing OK it's going to attempt to measure the screen rate. Let me just check if the mic is working. Yes, it is. I've made so many repeats just because the mic stopped working. So the welcome screen is the same. Uh, the instructions is the same, but then I added one more screen, which is the practice of interference task, right? Because a lot of participants said that they had difficulty trying to understand what is happening, what are we going to do, how are they going to count down in multiples of trees. So this is where the experiment would explain it in detail and then have the participant practice it so that they are able to uh, focus on the experiment, right? I've made the box bigger so that it's easy to see and change the color as well because my wife said so, right? So I think it was 142, right? And that's correct. I've made added this cute emoji in feedback and I've added changed the length of it as well so that we can have more time before we move on to the next task, right? Next file. Let me just make a uh, error. And there's that sad emoji that tells us, okay, you've made an incorrect. I might actually get rid, rid of these emojis because it's not very professional in the end, right? Uh, but let's see, right? I, I don't think we need to end, uh, complete this experiment. Let me just uh, show you what I promised in the beginning of the uh, video, and that's where I learned to uh, use PsychoPy, and that's this channel right here, Jason Ozubko. Uh, he's a doctor, Jason Ozubko. I think he's from Canada, and he has explained PsychoPy in great detail, especially this particular playlist. If you follow along and uh, make the experiment that he's making yourself as well, I think it would be very, very easy for you to learn PsychoPy, right? So if you have any questions uh, and concerns, you can reach out to Dr. Jason Azubko, and you can reach out to me as well. I'll post uh, my email somewhere in the video, and I'll also post a link to this channel, Jason Ozubko's channel, uh, in the description. Please do uh, like uh, the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or concerns, you can ask them in the comments section below. That's it. See you guys next time.